Hi, I'm Rocco Steno and welcome to Story Makers. Today we're doing a Story Makers remote with Alice Coltman, who's in Puerto Rico. Welcome to Story Makers, Alice. Hi, Rocco. I'm really happy to be here, but I'm also really happy to be here. It looks like it's a beautiful day in Puerto Rico. And why are you, well, before you tell us why you're in uh, Puerto Rico, you're here to tell us about the tantalizing tale of Grace Minow, which is your book. And, it, and Grace Minow is spelled, Minow is spelled M-I-N-N-A-U-G-H. But it also, there's another type of minnow too, right? There's a fish minnow. Yes, it's a minnow, which is spelled M-I-N-N-O-W, which is sort of why I gave my main character her last name, is so that it was kind of a punny kind of last name. For our viewers that may not know what a pun is, what is a pun? Well, a pun is like a play on words, so, you know, it's a joke that's based on one word being used to mean both what it means and maybe another meaning as well. But why is minnow a pun in this particular book? You have to tell me a little bit about it. Well, the tantalizing tale of Grace Minnow is about a girl who originally is from the Midwest and she's not a real water fan and she moves to Southern California, which is not something she's very happy about because of her father's new job. And she spends the first few weeks really miserable and grumpy and sullen. And then she sort of finds that she can't resist the pull of the ocean. And she starts out very slowly, dog paddling, swimming, and gradually she becomes a really great swimmer. But that's not the end of it. There's a moment early on in the book, so I'm not, I'm not giving anything away because everybody pretty much who buys this book or reads this book knows that it's about a mermaid, but she has a moment in the ocean where she almost drowns, but instead of drowning, she sprouts gills and a fishtail and becomes a mermaid. So Grace Minnow, a fish, is a real half fish. So she is a mermaid. I thought mermaids were only, uh, you know, fantasy. So it, it must be very difficult, you know, to be a mermaid. Uh, is she a mermaid some of the times, but not all of the time? Yes, yeah, she is a mermaid. When she goes in the water and she submerges, she's all the way under the water. Her head, everything is covered. And... Um, she can only turn into a mermaid in certain conditions, which, again, in the book, she does a little experiment to find out when exactly she turns into a mermaid. So yeah, part of the time she's a walking, talking girl in sixth grade, doing sixth grade type of things, and then her, her secret life, because she doesn't tell anybody that she's a mermaid, um, she sees people are gonna think she's kind of like a freak of nature, she goes underwater and she has a whole other life. So in some ways, she sort of has two lives, um, which is both a great thing, but it also causes some problems for her in the book. When she goes beneath the surface of the uh, ocean, does she uh, encounter various sea life? Oh boy, does she ever. <laughs> she sees all sorts of things. She sees fish, she sees plants, she sees rock formations, and one very important thing that she sees is a shipwreck, which she becomes kind of like her own personal playground, because she doesn't really meet any other mermaids. Um, so she sort of goes down there and explores this shipwreck, and it turns out that this shipwreck is also something that is very interesting to a boy on land, which is her best friend in Southern California. The town she lives in is called La Toya, and she meets a boy named Alfie da Costa, and he's obsessed, obsessed with shipwrecks. And no one's been able to find this particular shipwreck, but Grace knows where it is because she plays there all the time. 
so she has kind of a dilemma. Does she tell Alfie? Does she not tell Alfie? Um, there's all sorts of things she has to figure out, like how to have the double life and how to have a new friend, how to keep a secret from a new friend. Do you keep a secret from a new friend? Um, anyway, it gets very complicated for her. But yeah, so aside from fish and plants and all sorts of other stuff, she sees a shipwreck. In writing this book, did you have to research mermaids? Well, I didn't really have to research mermaids because I've kind of been obsessed with mermaids for most of my life. So when I was a little girl, I used to stick both my legs in my pajama pant bottom, one side of my pajamas, and shuffle around my house and pretend I was a mermaid. Um, but obviously I wasn't. <laughs> And, you know, over the years, because I so much loved mermaids, I'd read about mermaids, i collect, like, mermaid memorabilia. Um, I even have some pictures of stuff, which I could show you of my mermaid stuff, if you want. Yes, we'd love to see that. So you've been a, uh, you've been fascinated by mermaids ever since you were a child, and, uh, so, what pictures do you have that you can show us? Well, I can show you, one is a picture that I drew recently, well, about 10 years ago, I drew a picture of a mermaid, and I didn't even know then that this mermaid was gonna turn into Grace Minnow, the main character in my book. So there's a picture of that mermaid. You said you drew that 10 years ago. What are some of the things that you see in that drawing that uh, remind you of Grace? Well, Grace has all this crazy red curly hair, and in that drawing you can see her hair gets even bigger underwater. She's sort of got a freckles on her face, and uh, her, she's got that long, you know, purplish, bluish tail. Um, so I think maybe I didn't even realize when I drew that picture that already in my imagination I had the idea for this book. Um, but even before I drew the picture of the, the mermaid who would become Grace, I used to do things like peel the label off of chicken of the sea tuna fish cans because there, I don't know, there's that beautiful little mermaid on that can too. And one of the other things that I love to do, especially in the winter, because that's when it's, even me who would love to be a mermaid all the time, the idea of going in the ocean in the winter is not appealing to me. So I have this special blanket that I love that makes me really feel like a mermaid. <laughs> there you are. Yeah, and there I am reading my favorite book. Your favorite book, and that is? The Tantalizing Tale of Grace Minow, of course. Oh, okay, I got you. So Grace was able to transform herself into something she wasn't, you know, a mermaid. So boys and girls, if you were able to transform yourself into a, a magical creature or superhero, what powers would you like to have? Think about that. And then tell us in the comments below what those powers will be. Also, boys and girls, you don't have to necessarily even think of something spectacular. Um, sometimes I think it's really interesting to use your imagination just to think of something that you're kind of good at. You don't have to be great at it. You don't have to even think of it necessarily as a superpower, but sometimes just the smallest little thing that you're good at can be, if you use your imagination, can turn you into something special. It could be just that you're a great friend, or you're a fantastic listener, or you can touch your tongue to your nose. Um, so you can really play around with this, and because again, Grace started out not even knowing how to swim at all and not even liking the water but somehow she was thrown into the situation and it became something really special.
Okay, if you're going to the beach this summer, the tantalizing tale of Grace Minnow would be a great beach read. Well, speaking of beaches, Rocco, I, I gotta go. Oh, really? What's up? Surf's up. Bye. <laughs> oh, oh, look at that. Okay, surf's up, I see. Bye, Alice. Have a good swim. And remember, until next time, read a book in any format.